member for Vancouver East. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm uh, very honoured to second this motion and rise to speak in support uh, of this important motion. The motion, as we heard from the leader of the NDP, basically calls for the federal government to act now, to take profit out of long-term care, to put people before profit, to say we as a society, we value the lives of seniors more than money. Seniors in long-term care facilities have been especially hard hit by the pandemic. In the first wave of the pandemic, more than 80% of all COVID-19 deaths in the country have been reported in long-term care facilities and retirement homes. That means one in five of the total COVID cases in Canada were among long-term care residents. And of course, the impact of COVID-19 also affected the workers in those facilities. In Canada, more than 9,600 staff in long-term care facilities were infected with COVID-19, representing more than 10% of the total cases. The pandemic has exposed severe cracks in our system, and some of the elderly and most vulnerable people pay the ultimate price for that. Across the country, more than a quarter of Canada's long-term care homes are for-profit. And we have learned that for-profit care homes were more likely to see extensive COVID-19 outbreaks and more deaths than non-profit facilities. In fact, things got so bad in Ontario that the military and the Red Cross had to be called in to help care for seniors. How did things get so bad? In the for-profit care homes, care aides and personal support workers were underpaid and they're often part-time or casual workers, which meant that they often had to work in multiple job sites in order to make ends meet. This is, of course, can be deadly in the face of a pandemic where social distancing is an essential health measure. And to be clear, the reason why they're underpaid is so that the company could get a larger profit margin. They are part-time or casual workers, which also meant that they are not paid benefits or sick time. And in addition, long-term care homes often subcontract out services such as laundry, cleaning, and cooking. And it's also very likely that subcontracted staff do not have paid sick leave. And without paid sick leave, workers may be compelled to go to work even if they're feeling ill. All of the above conditions contributed to and increased the risk of transmissions. The outcome is devastating for far too many seniors and their families and for the workers. The horror stories of the condition the seniors were in that we heard through the media just takes your breath away. It is not supposed to be that way. The seniors in our communities help build this country. Their retirement years are supposed to be their golden years. They deserve to live in comfort, with dignity and safety, and as do people with a disability. Yet because of decades of cuts under funding and privatization, our continuing care system is broken. The bottom line is that Canada has failed to protect long-term care residents and workers throughout this pandemic. We have to ask ourselves, how is it possible that seniors in some care homes were abandoned in their beds for weeks on end? Some cry for help for hours before assistance was provided. Some had to be bathed. They had not been bathed for weeks. Imagine if that was your mother or your grandmother. Such horrific stories are not just stories. They are real experiences of loved ones. Report after report review what we should know instinctively, that profits should never be the bottom line when it comes to continuing care. And the evidence is overwhelming. It is undeniable that for-profit homes have, been, have seen worse results than other homes with deadlier COVID outbreaks. Yet at the same time, for-profit operators were getting public subsidies and paying out millions in dividends to shareholders. And meanwhile, their workers are underpaid and some making minimum wages. 
things were so desperate for some of them that some had to resort to live in a shelter. And in fact, there was an, um, it was, there was an outbreak in an Ottawa homeless shelter under exactly such a circumstance. It helps no one if frontline essential healthcare workers are pushed into homelessness. The colossal failure of the system is Canada's national shame. Even outside of a pandemic situation, research has shown that homes run on a for-profit basis tend to have lower staffing levels, more verified complaints, and more transfers to hospitals, as well as higher rates of both ulcers and morbidity. We, as parliamentarians, have the power to do something about this. Action must be taken now to prevent a repeat of this in the future. We must transition for transition the for-profit model in long-term care to a non-profit model. For the NDP, we want to see an end to for-profit long-term care by 2030. That's why we're calling for a national task force to devise a plan to get the job done. We must also set national standards. Let's work collaboratively with provincial, territorial leaders, experts, and workers alike to set national standards for long-term care and other continuing care that would include accountability mechanisms. Without national standards, the federal government is leaving the door wide open for the for-profit companies to cut corners and to put profit first at the expense of our loved ones. And that cannot be allowed to continue. Those standards should be tied to $5 billion in federal funding and the principles in Canada's Health Care Act. We can put in place a seniors care guarantee. Seniors deserve to know that they will have safe, dignified care, both at home and in care homes, available to, to them as they age. Families deserve to know that their loved ones will have the care they deserve with inspections and appropriate levels of care and staff ratios. Workers deserve to know that their wages will reflect the value of their work and allow them to live in dignity without having to work multiple jobs or end up in a shelter because they can't afford housing. They deserve to know that the government has their back and that they will have access to protective equipment and safe working conditions. The federal government can show leadership by transferring Rivera from a for-profit long-term care chain owned by a Crown Pension Fund into a publicly managed entity. Public ownership of long-term care facilities would allow workers to work full-time at one home at competitive union rates, which would address understaffing and prevent the transmission of illness. The benchmark for quality long-term care is 4.1 hours of hands-on care per resident per day. However, no province or territory currently meets the standard of care. Long-term care homes are chronically understaffed across Canada. Nurses and personal support workers at these facilities are often paid low wages, saddled with overwhelming workloads and subject to high levels of stress, burnt out and even violence. Precarious and part-time employment often forces these healthcare workers to move between facilities to earn a living. Wait lists for long-term care can have lengthy backlogs because the care facilities isn't keeping pace with Canada's aging population. This shortage leads to overcrowding at long-term care facilities and overuse of the hospital system by those without access to appropriate care. There's a lack of accountability for long-term care facility operators due to lax enforcement of standards and regulations. For example, a recent CBC investigation revealed that 85% of long-term care homes in Ontario have routinely violated healthcare standards for decades without near total impunity. With, we have the power within us to end this for this generation and beyond. Seniors deserve better, families deserve better, workers deserve better. And let us never forget these words from Canada's chief public health officer. And I quote, I think the tragedy and the massive lesson learned for everyone in Canada is that we were at every level not able to protect our seniors, particularly those in long-term care homes. Even worse is that the second wave, as we warned of the resurgence, there was a repeat of the huge impact on that population.
And for those who want to say we can't do it because of jurisdictional issues, let me quote Marcy Cohen, Research Associate for the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. And she said, the setting of clear standards in healthcare as a condition of federal funding is not an attack on provincial jurisdiction. It is the only path. Unfortunately, the member's time is up. I've been trying to. Uh, unfortunately, the member's time is up. Um, I've been trying to give a signal, um, but I'm sure she'll have lots of time uh, during the five minute question and comments to add. Uh, the questions and comments, the honorable uh, member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I just want to uh, try to ask uh, the seconder of the motion the same question that the Parliamentary Secretary did of the mover, and that's with respect to uh, any possible consultation that's gone on with provinces. Um, the mover, the leader of the NDP, responded to that question by basically just saying, well, uh, there, you know, there, it's not as though we can't do this uh, without provinces. They can come on board later. But that's not the question that he was asked. He was asked, did any consultation occur? Not how do provinces feel about it. We're just trying to figure out if any consultation occurred on this and can the seconder confirm whether or not any of the provinces have been consulted on the motion? The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. I know that the um, the, the government would often say that we can't move forward on anything unless if the province and the territorial uh, uh, the provinces and territories are also in agreement and of course if we actually lived with that kind of suggestion we would never have had universal Medicare let me just finish my quote because that goes to the heart of the issue right here from Marcy Cohen and uh, and I was just about finishing it and where it says where she said the setting of clear standards in healthcare as a condition of federal funding is not an attack on provincial jurisdiction. It is the only path forward to a universal public system of long-term and continuing care. The same path Canada took to universal hospital and physician care. Seniors and people with disabilities deserve nothing less. And this motion actually calls for us to do exactly that work, to engage with province and territorial leaders and experts in the system and healthcare workers to come up with those standards, to put in place protection for seniors so that what we saw, saw happen in the pandemic and the loss of lives will never happen again. Questions and comments. Oh, excuse the honourable member. The honourable member for salaberry sur -Wap. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member has had the privilege, like I did, to work in a long-term care facility. I've been a social worker in a long-term care facility in Quebec. I've also managed beds in a long-term care facility. In my opinion, it's not national standards that's going to improve care. That's not what we need. I'm not sure who she consulted in Quebec, but I can say that that's not what is going to change the situation. My question is, through this motion, is she aware that this is an affront to the Premier of Quebec, an affront to the National Assembly of Quebec, which unanimously is opposed to national standards and is opposed to any intrusion in its jurisdiction, including health care? Is she aware that this is an affront to Quebec? Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I have to say this. What I see as an affront is what's happened to the seniors. What I see as a national shame is the very fact that we don't have national standards and so many seniors lost their lives in the face of the pandemic. We know that for-profit has for-profit long-term care facilities has contributed to the loss of lives. Report after report, expert after expert who's looked into the situation has said so. Isn't it time for us to set aside jurisdictional issues? Isn't it time for us to say we must do better, that the seniors deserve no less? Isn't it time that we ensure that the Canada Health Act is followed? Isn't it time that we take profit out of care? Isn't it time that we put people before all else? 
and to say very clearly, lives matter and we value seniors and we will do everything we can to protect them and to never let this happen again. Resuming debate.